That dirty, low-down coyote. That's his third night hand running his left you out like this. It ain't human. Torture. Leaving a poor, fagged-out horse with nothing to eat. The dirty, loafing, drunken bum. He never was any good and he never will be. He thinks I'm going to be chambermaid to his horse. He's crazy. Ah! I've a good mind to plug you. Stabbing a man in the leg, you old walrus. You got to drop on me, fella. But you put that gun away and give me an even break, I'll make you eat them words. Think you're funny, eh? I'll fix you, you laughing hyena. It's a good thing you taught little Jimmy how to wrestle, old-timer, or I'd be eating old work by now. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy! Soupy, you old coyote, you jern yurtle! <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee, Soupy, I'm glad to see you. Sonny, I feel like balling. Well, go ahead, I'll ball with you. What have you been doing these last four years? I've had a heck of a lot of fun, Soupy. I was wrestling and boxing in the carnival for a while. 
Then I got mixed up in a Mexican revolution. I'd have been a general by now, but they ran out of ammunition. <laughs> they just chased me across the border this morning. <laughs> Say, tell me. How is the old double O? Mm, pretty bad, son. Ever since your twin brother Duke come back from college two years ago, things have just been going from wash to washer. The old man's been ailing, splitting his time twixt mud baths and hospitals. Up to now, Duke ain't done nothing but gamble and get drunk. He's in charge here, you know. Cattle been rustled right and left, and when the boys wanted to do something about it, he fired them. Fired me, too. Yeah, but I wouldn't go. How does that feel now? Well, after having his appendicitis and teeth took out about a month ago, he came back feeling pretty good. After taking one look at the ranch, he went right back to bed. I wish you'd do something with that darn twin brother of yours. I'll do something with him, all right. I'm collecting $200 that he owes me. And then I'm buying a new outfit, breathing along. In the meantime, I'm going to get a few more hours sleep. But you're dead. Ain't you going to see me? Dad doesn't want to see me, Snoopy. Just don't let anyone know that I'm here. Hello, Duke. I've been expecting you. What's on your mind, Regan? Big doings, Duke. I'll tell you all about it. Hello, Duke. Well, if it isn't a long-lost black sheep. Have one on me. Well, thanks. I'm not drinking. But I will accept that $200 you owe me. $200? Who wouldn't? Let's make this short. I want that money you owe me. And then you'll never see me again. OK? That's perfect. The only trouble is I can't spare it. You'll spare it and like it. I suppose Dad never found out who stole that money. And it was you he should have kicked out instead of me. Well, it's going to break me, but... I'll write in at the bank and get it. You better not let the old man feel like that. He's low enough already. More than likely, Duke got drunk yesterday. Waking up about now. He'll come staggering in. Soupy, Mr. Dixon's worse. I think you'd better send the doctor out. And please try to find Mr. Duke. His father's asking for him.
What's the matter, Soupy? Is Dad worse? Well, he ain't no better. Doc's in there with him now. That darn twin brother of yourn, he drawed all the money out of the bank and took a train for Phoenix. Phoenix? Yeah, Phoenix. Darn skunk. The best man that ever lived laying in there worrying about him. Jimmy, the doctor says that worrying about him and the ranch is what's got him down. We just got to do something. I got it. The old man never could tell you two apart. You put on Duke's clothes and go in past by him. No, Soupy. I could never get away with it. Jimmy, I ain't never asked you to do nothing before. Ever? Huh? All right, you old walrus. Get me those clothes. Hooray! Say it. I'll say it all right. I'm telling you what to think of you, and then I'm going to knock that sneer off in that pretty face of yours. <laughs> Jimmy! Why, uh, cracky, you didn't take a telescope to see the difference. How'd you get here? I climbed through a window. I wanted to try my act out on you first. Well, son, you can sure take a bow. You don't smile, and they'll never know you. Uh-huh. I'm glad you're here, Duke. My son, you've toughened up. What have you been doing? I've been out looking over the stock, Dad. Oh, I know I've been laying down on a job the last few months, but... But now I'm going to put the old double O back on its feet. And what's more, in a couple of days, you're going to get up and help me. I know somebody would be mighty happy to hear you talk like that. Why don't you run over and, and get Gene? I want to talk to you two kids together. Gene? Oh, all right, Dad. Sure. Sure. Make out, huh? Great. Who in the heck is Jean? <laughs> well, the way things is, I guess she must be your sweetie. Well, Dad wants me to get her. Well, why don't you go ahead? You ain't scared of a skinny little gal, are you? You're darn right I'm scared. But you're going with me. Oh, no, not me. No, sir. You're going with now, me. Now, wait a minute. I said that. Mary, will you please hold that mirror still? How do you expect me to get all shaved and looking nice before Miss Jean gets here? 
Oh, Miss Jean liked you just as well with a full beard. There ain't no use of you shaving anyhow. You don't look no more sick than I do. I believe you've been fooling everybody. Well, fooling to have everything cut out but your gizzard. Well, then I've been fooling. Did I, did I ever tell you about my operation? Jean. How are you, Jean? Just fine. <laughs> Hello, Jean. Jean, I'm glad to see you. my tobacco. Dad wants to see you. Let's go. They took out my teeth, and my tonsils, and my appendix. Then they thought it was my liver. But when they wanted to cut that out, I just put my foot right down. I asked them, how's a man going to live without a liver? Get it? Live without a liver. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Hello, Jeannie. Hello, Mr. Dixon. How are you? Oh, I'm feeling a lot better. A lot better. Jeannie, Duke has decided to quit fooling around and put the double O back on its feet. He's going to settle right down to business. In that case, I move that you two get married. Any objection? Motion carried unanimously. So, two weeks from today, Miss Jean Adams will become Mrs. Duke Dixon. <laughs> well, Dad, I, I think we'd better be going. You see, Jean has to get back. Oh, all right, all right. Well, goodbye, Jeannie. Goodbye, Mr. Dixon. Bye. Goodbye, Jean. 
Come in, you darned old people in town. Well, Deacon, I reckon I'm as happy as you are about it. For a time there, I was afeard that Gene was going to marry the wrong fella. I'll be riding over again real soon, Gene. Don't you want to kiss me? You know that I do. But you, you see, I'm not the person you think I am. I know you've been kind of wild. But that's all over. It's just the future that counts now. You know, this would be the happiest day of my life if Jimmy was only here. Yeah, that's right. Soupy, if you spit in my boot again, I'll shoot you. See Regan tonight and come sober. Lem's orders. What do you know about a fellow named Regan? Well, I know he's a gunman and a killer. Runs a game over Blackie's bar. Up to now, Duke's been his best customer. Have you got a few bucks on you, Soupy? <laughs> got $14 under my bunk. That is, if the rats ain't at it. You're sure welcome to it if you want it, Jimmy. Thanks. I think I'll have a look at this fellow, Regan. We're just about washed up around here. Someone is bound to get suspicious about the darn many cattle being shipped at the Double O brand when you've been so low on stock lately. I've been thinking about that. Now, here's my idea. One week from today, we'll clean out all these ranches and drive the stock over onto your south range. Now, instead of stopping to change brands and ship as usual, we'll shove them through the pass and over the border. How does that sound? We're a cinch. Well, let's have a drink to the big cleanup. Give us a drink. Hello, Duke. How about a little 
a drink for Millie. Sure. I told you to lay off of the kid. I licked you once for playing up to her. The next time, I'm going to ruin you. Hey, look out there. I'll kill you. You can't stand any chance of that. Come on, there. Clean the other day? I'm not. I'm sober tonight. <laughs> <laughs> After I wash up a little, what do you say uh, you and I have a little social game? You're on. Come on, let's have a drink. Come on, boys, everybody. The drinks are on the house. Hello, son. Thanks for loaning me that dough, Soupy. Lord, you ain't held up no bank, have you? No. But I broke the bank at Blackie's bar. You did? How? If a fella keeps his mouth shut and his eyes open around the carnival, he learns a lot of tricks. Regan knew a few tricks with the cards. But I knew a couple he didn't. <laughs> uh, you better get a little sleep, son. I'm going to. Roll me out in a couple hours. I have something I want to talk over with you. All right, son. The day of the big cleanup, we'll round up all the boys that we can get together, Soupy. And we'll nail that bunch red-handed. In the meantime, I wouldn't say a word to anybody. Someone's liable to tip Regan off. And it'll sure be a cleanup. And I guess I'll go out and take a look at the cattle. Well, morning, dear. Morning, Soupy. <laughs> Hello. Hello, sunshine. Jane, Dad sort of rushed us into this. Are you sure that you want to go through with it? Don't you? Why, of course. But you see, I... I was on my way to pick out my wedding dress. You don't understand, Jean. There's something I have to tell you. time in me, huh? So, this is why I haven't seen you. Say, they've been telling that story backwards. It's the farmer's daughter who beats the city girl's time. Jane! Jane! You see what you've done? Don't be serious, Dookie. I'm not mad. Listen, honey. You don't have to be jealous of her. It's just a little situation that was wished only by the old man. I'm just kidding her along until Regan and I make a big cleanup. And I'm getting you, and we're going places. Sounds good to me, Dookie boy. Until then, I have a million things to do. So home you go, little girl. When 
I drove all the way from Phoenix just to be sent home. Am I flattered? Well, don't worry, kid. After all this is over, why, we'll make up for lost time. Okay, Duke. Where in the heck have you been? Another one of your funny jokes, huh? Would you please tell me how you got here before I did? I've been waiting here for you all day. You're crazy. I just kissed you a fond goodbye at the ranch. All right, I'm crazy then. But I've been here all day. Well, if it wasn't you, it must have been your twin brother. You didn't know I had a twin brother, did you? Is that right? Say, there is a difference. And it's not in your favor. Did I knock him over? One look at me, and he's going to make a big clean-up with Regan and take me places. Did he say that? Why, sure. A dirty double-crosser. Hello. Get me Border City 349 and make it snappy. Hello. Yes, here's the Regan. Yeah? I thought there was something wrong. Well, don't worry about it. I'll take care of him. You get back to ranch right away. I'll be there in nothing flat. Yeah, I'm taking Blondie's car. Yeah. See you in a couple of days. Okay, don't crack up my car. Hello, Dad. Hello, Duke. How are you feeling? Well, since you promised to straighten up and put the double O back in the running, I'm. I'm feeling a lot better. I'm sure glad to hear that. I'll see you later, Dad. I, I want to talk to Soupy. Where's Jim? Maybe he's laying out there plug in the back by your pal, Regan. What do you mean? I mean he's been walking in a dirty sneak's boots. He went to see Regan's men tonight, and he ain't come back. I told Regan that... Where's your hangout? The head of the lake near the South Range. And I'll be needing help. I haven't got time for details, Dad, but... Jimmy's been taking my place here. I double-crossed him. Regan's got him. I'm going after him. Regan? I'm going with you. Hello, Joe. Baxter calling. Call all the men in the valley. Yeah. Rusher. I'll pick you up as I come along.
down, Dixon. These are some of the boys that are going to help us out on the drive. Here's a drawing showing the easiest way to get to the pass. It's a short trail to the pass you're going, Dixon. You see, I know you, Jim. He's done for. We gotta get rid of him. Boys have started the drive. We'd better join them. Well, Jimmy. Dad! Regan started the drive. We've got to beat him to the pass. Let's go.
It's a Dixon. Get some of the boys and we'll run them down. Yonder goes our cattle, men. Round them up and get the skunks that's herding them. Sneak around behind them. I'll draw their fire. Well, what's the matter, son? They creased me back at the hideout. It's nothing, Dad. We've turned back the cattle, kid. We sure got them on the run, Soupy. It's all right, Dad. 
I'm just no good anyway. But you, you're just well. You're my boy, and I. Dad. Everything's getting dark, man. I'll be with you. Like you did when I was a kid. <laughs> been asking for this, Baxter, and now you're going to get it. Drop that gun, Reagan. Make it a fast draw, Reagan. It's going to be your last. Reagan, your killing days are over. We sure were lucky to get them cattle back. No, yeah, you're right, we were. Only lost 16 head out of the herd. Only 16? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> sure is great to be young, huh? Couple of great kids. Huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. 